Hello, what's up guys? PC here, and today I am back with another Kerbal Space Program tutorial. And uh, today I, uh, I'm going to be um, teaching you guys how to build a simple, basic rocket that's multi-purpose. And what I mean by multi-purpose is actually, you know, you're able to land in orbit, and you know, you could do a bunch of stuff. It's not just one job, it can actually hold more than one task, because... You know, many people like that, you know, so you don't have to rendezvous up there and dock. But that is an option, you know, for refueling. You could do that too. So, uh, yeah, we'll be making that spacecraft. Um, so, uh, first thing we got to talk about is simplicity and mass. So, that's the problem. And it's electric charge because out there we're going to be out for a long time. It's multi purpose, you know. But, you know, we're going to make one that goes back, you know, sling across the moon and the back. So, let's do that. So first, we have to know uh, the right um, command module that we're going to use. So obviously, we're all going to use the big one because obviously the small one, you know, I'm not that comfortable with. So the big one would always help. And for the small one to have the adapter installed, all that stuff, that's just going to add extra weight. So that's to me, it's not worth it. <laughs> if I'm wrong, it's all right. It's just by my feelings. So first, we all love safety. Like I said in the earlier video, we love safety. That's so why you have to have safety. It's um, you can either choose to have a parachute or you can choose to have a docking port or a shielded docking port. It's really your choice, but for today's video, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a parachute. You go, or we can simply choose to have a docking port on top and two parachutes by the side, but that'll add this a lot of mass. And trust me, that's not what we want in this video. We want simplicity for today. Okay, so obviously now after we have our parachute set up, we need a uh, radial decoupler. There's, which one's the Roco Max one because it's the same type for the huge capsule. Alright, so third step, fuel tanks. This is one of the most complex part of this whole process. You gotta learn how to choose the fuel tanks. The right one for the right engine, and please, this FPS sucks a lot. Um, so, what I would do for the command module, though, is uh, a huge Rokomax X200-32, which is, you know, or you could just say the big-ass tank. And, by simply just using this big tank, you can, uh, just add, or you can just choose a smaller one. You know, this has double the mass as this because it has double the fuel, but with an extra, you know, nothing beneficial. <laughs> so other than that, okay. So we want to use the uh, skipper. We can either choose for our nozzle of our command module. We can use the skipper, or we can use the uh, poodle. You know, if you're if you're looking for uh, speed efficiency and you're you know you're using a big spacecraft like this. Uh, you know, it, the poodle would only work a little bit when you're, you know, using a smaller spacecraft than this. Now, let's say that you're got, you're about to use this kind of fuel tank. Let's see where is that fuel tank. You know, just no, no not too symmetry. There, this kind of fuel tank. You know, the poodle would look fine on it, but that's not what we're up to right now. To me, I think the skipper would do the perfect job. And really, it's by your feel, so it's your option. Use the poodle or skipper, but my recommendation, I like to use the skipper because, uh, you know, not all, not because it's, um, you, know, it's, you know, it's underpowered. It's kind of underpowered. So if you compare the power between the, um, the skipper and its competitor, which is the poodle, 650 maximum power and 220 maximum power, and yeah, that's really underpowered. That's, you know... But not as underpowered as the atomic fuel, you know, the atomic nozzle. But other than that, let's stick some decorations onto our little command module. So in this new version, 0.21, they've, they've added, you know, so that your torque requires battery. Ha <laughs> ha! So what does that give you an idea? Solar panels, obviously. Or you could just choose the simpler one. This is actually... Um, there's really no difference here besides the mass, except and it takes out this heavy part, which is the um, the heavy casing. So it's really better if you're looking for weight concern. It's better if you have um, you know these simple panels, 
without having to have the huge casing behind it. And trust me, that is that's quite the mess, to be honest. Um, other than that, alright, so... And everyone knows multi-purpose spacecrafts have landing gears. So, to choose between these three, not only you have to look onto its mass, but its impact tolerance. By judging the LT5 micro landing struts, impact tolerance 10 bullshit. Do not believe that. It's a small landing lake designed for this tiny space rope. True. Lightweight landers, unrecommended. Do not use it for lightweight landers. And uh, the impact tolerance 10 is complete bullcrap. I know it looks kind of like the Eagle M, um, you know, back in the 60s where Apollo 11 had that. But trust me, it's not worth it. It's, it's not really worth it. And uh, neither is the LT2 struts unless you're having a huge, you know, mission, you know, in this case. But for me, my recommendation is to use the LT1 landing strut for this kind of spacecraft. Oh. Forgot to mention, you just wanna, you might wanna drag your solar panels up a bit, and there we go. And uh, RCS, RCS fuel tanks and RCS pods are an option if you're looking forward to docking. Uh, in this case, we're not, because uh, I think we have what we need now. Alright, and now we need to add decoupler. As you know, I have the cool effect on how it has the casing, that's cool. It's a little glitchy though, Shit, is it? There we go. Now, to the main fuel tank, the most commonly mistaken part. As we all know, we do not use that much solid rocket boosters, which is the um, the long one and the small one. Either one, we don't use that that much nowadays because we have the huge Rokomax one, and I don't think that this will probably help for this kind of spaceship. So let's not use, let's not use the rocket boosters. They're not really, a necessity. We're all looking forward for um, liquid fuel tanks. Not only it's more controllable, but it's also more efficient. Even though it weights heavy, but it will overcome its gravity. Trust me. I know Isaac Newton will. Alright, so obviously we have to choose the huge Jebo fuel tank, but don't get confused. Because, keep in mind, I'm pretty sure there's more than one. Or is it just my head that's being wobbled? I'm pretty sure there's more than one orange fuel tank. Or is it just my imagination? Because last time I saw there was more than one fuel tank. Oh well. Probably my head messing around with me again. I was an insane boy since I was in Australia. 2010. It's crazy. Um, alright, so... Moving on. So, uh, so we added one orange fuel tank. And it is an option... To add... You know, more under it, like the, uh, let's say, I add the Brokemax X200-8, and, uh, the reason I'm adding this is for one reason, actually multiple reasons. One, it adds fuel, not much mass either, two, um, three, um, if you guys have been playing Kerbal Space Program for a little while, you probably know that the orange fuel tank overheats a lot if you reach it up to 100% or 80%, and somehow you're running out of time, you can't decrease any um, fuel. So that's one reason that I'm replacing it with an, um, replacing the bottom fuel with the other Rokomax, the white fuel tanks. Because gee, this thing overheats like hell. Do not, do not use it, don't use this itself alone, because trust me, it's frustrating. Uh, anyways, um, RCS fuel tanks for the huge tanks, because uh, as you guys know, this is a huge rocket. Even though it's simple, it is huge. And, uh, you know, the game physics really is kind of accurate in some cases. You know, the more mass you have for the spaceship, it has a slower rate of turn. So, according to this, RCS fuel increases that by about 70-80%. Okay? So, have four of you want to have eight of these. Four on top, four on the bottom. And if you study physics well, you probably know that yes, indeed, that'll increase your, you know, chances of having more fire rate of turn. Because just for itself is not enough. And plus, this thing contains a shitload of freaking RCS fuel. So don't even bother, you know, you can add, you know, you can add 12 if you want to. Faster rate of turn for the win. But then eventually you're going to have to ditch this thing. And, uh, you know, there's no space for the, um, the other rockets. But anyways... 
let's take these off for a moment because we have to place something else in there. And yes, we all know what it is. First, let's get our decouplers ready. So, you want to use the dehyd the hydraulic detachment hold for these ones because trust me, we're going to be using huge rockets onto this. And yes, this has this has way more mass. You can either choose to use these too. I mean, like, is it really your choice? It depends on what you're using, really. So, 0 0.16 mass. Comparing to this, 0. Point, like, we're gonna have 0 0.1 mass. So, I think... I'm sorry, hydraulic. I'm just sorry. Even though the other one, which is the hydraulic detachment manifold, is actually for the huge tanks, but it'll still work with the, um, the tiny one, the TT-38K, and it's also lighter, too. But it doesn't have that much detachment force. You'd probably be about a meter away from the from the debris that's been left out from the detachment fold. So really, there's really nothing to worry. Okay, so back in topic. We're wasting a lot of time here. And again, so uh, we gotta add some more fuel tanks. Yes. So keep in mind, guys. Two of these white Rokomax fuel tanks is equivalent to this orange one. So. If you think about it, this is my strategy on getting into an orbit. We fire we fire the four boosters first. Um, let's make sure that's all aligned. There we go. Here's the thing we want to make sure. We fire these first, the side boosters, and when these separate, the main engine will fire. And that's my strategy, and trust me, it works a lot. But also, people's been also mistaken. They've underestimated the... Um, the power of integrity. You know, they really don't think that integrity is such a problem for some players, but in fact it is. Integrity is a problem. So you want to make sure you have these EAS strut connectors connected to each and one of these tanks. And make sure it's kind of vertical because you do not want it diagonal. You want it to be balanced. Okay. Alright, never mind. That's not the right thing. <laughs> My bad. I guess that'll do for now. Alright, so that's good. So, and you also have to do one more thing. Integrity with the main engine. You might want to add a little bit more strut connectors towards this. Because, like I said in my last um, Kerbal Space Program Let's Play video, I love safety. And yes, I do in fact love safety. Safety is not to be not loved even though two of my Kerbals died. Alright, so now is the engine nozzle. We have to choose our engine nozzle. Skipper or mainsail. I think retards would use skipper, unless you have a small rocket, of course. But in this case, we're going to use the mainsail for every single one of these things, no matter what. See? Looks perfect. And now, since we fixed integrity and all that but for the bottom part, let's fix integrity for the top part of the rocket. So, obviously we're not going to add a new nose cone. That'll just add extra weight, nor adapters. So, in this case, I think it's time for us... You know, it doesn't look as pretty, but it works. And it's all that, that's all that matters. For these, connect it to... Uh, make sure you want to be aligned, though. Okay, so... Okay, so make sure it's aligned. If you're not aligned, then you gotta re, we got re, get, you gotta redo it, kind of. But trust me, it'll cause you imbalance. You know, you'll be thrown off balance if you don't get this right. All right, so we have nozzle, we have the rocket boosters, we have integrity, we have all that stuff. But we have, let's see, a center of thrust. Only it tells us how much thrust. In an estimate, we're gonna probably make a hundred percent for all these things. Oh, and uh, one more thing. Oh, wait, I don't think that's anymore. <laughs> My bad. Um, last thing is SAS. Yes. Oh, and the um, RCS thrusters. Forgot about that. Um, yeah. So first, let's handle SAS. SAS is one of our top priorities. So um, the reason we're also adding. Um, RCS thrusters, before you guys are going to say, oh, well, this thing has thrust vectoring. Yes, it does have thrust vectoring, but it only has thrust vectoring if you, like, burn the engine and the engine is on. 
And uh, it seems that way that I don't like it that way, so I think it's better for me to put RCS thrusters on my rockets. Hey, like I said, you gotta love safety. Now, let's see if we could fit this RCS thruster right behind there. There we go! We fit RCS thrusters even though it's, like, directly behind the Roko Max tank. tank. Oh, and this is also one of my recommendations. Add RCS thrusters onto the Rokomax tanks. Literally. And before you guys say, well, isn't that going to be a waste of RCS? In fact, it it creates more stability. And think about it. Um, let's get let's get one of the RCS statistics. Let's see how much fuel we have. 750. You can burn four of these. And last time I finished with it, I've actually done this before. I've used like 20 of these and it has like almost half remaining half remaining and I'm already in orbit so that's a very good technique and uh, I don't think you might need to add one in the um, command module because really there's no SC at, um, RCS in the command module because it's quite small so it's really you don't really need it so um, mission flag Soviet Union name RTC one. I don't know. I don't even know what I'm even doing, but RTC one. Let's give it a name. Kmart. I don't know. K. Correx. I don't know. I'm just giving it a name. And yeah, pretty much that's all we gotta cover off. And now we have to also cover staging. Staging is one of the most thing. some of the things that pe some people left, leave out because they think, oh, well, you know, it's automated, so they're gonna perfect, they're, they're gonna correct the stage for us, right? No, in fact, they're not. And Lou, look at that mission flag is stuck. Oh, wait, never mind, not anymore. All right, so staging, we want these four boosters fired once. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna let this craft up the craft file for this um, spaceship up for download, so don't worry. You can't make it, you can download it, if it works. So, um, yeah, so uh, we have four of these burning at once. And later, when the, the four separates, which is the four decouplers, you guys can see, it's, uh, it'll highlight it, there it is. It'll separate, and the main engine will burn, and once the main engine is done, it separates in here, and then it, you know, burns this engine, and then, you know, separates this, and then you have the parachute on. And yeah, I guess that all goes to plan, right? Save your craft and launch. So, uh, yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention that you guys can add launch stabil stabilizers if you really want to. To make sure that your spacecraft doesn't tip over during launch. You know, just in case if a minor glitch happens, which does happen in occasions, it does. And in future modes... Your curb will basically die after it, you know, after it dies, you know, after it crashes. So, launch stabilizers are a yes, but, in, you know, that's only if it glitches out. So, um, I don't think that you guys want me to, um, to sit down and watch the whole launching process. So, I'll come back with you guys after um, I reach orbit. So, and we'll also check how much fuel we have left for the command module. So, yeah, peace out. Lols. Alright, so just to show you guys that we're going so far so good, right now we're in space about to finish our booster bird, and look at this, we're still on our main tank and we still have the tank left. So yeah, I, don't, I can't really, I'm not going to burn this thing while I'm lagging kind of, so yeah. I'll see you guys when I finish boosting my orbit. Hey guys, I am back, and yes, we finally did it. Uh, we got it into a almost 200,000 orbit, which is, uh, I like to try at that out, and it, it, it yeah, it's perfect, it's, it works. And look how much fuel we have left, we have a lot left. Um, yeah, so yes, like I said, this is a multi-purpose spacecraft, so... But looking at this, you're, you're probably good to go to at least Moon and Minmus. But Duna is a whole new level, and only you have refueling station. Uh, I'm gonna make a, a how to rendezvous and dock video in the future, so um, I can actually show you guys uh, how it's how to rendezvous the ship and dock in an easy way. 
And pretty much, yeah, I guess this is the end of how to make a basic spacecraft. And uh, let me show you how universal it is by heading to the moon, maybe. I actually made a how to go to the moon video in the uh, my earlier videos and how to orbit as well. And so you guys can go check that out. I'll put the link in the description below. And coming up is a uh, probably a new KSP Let's Play. So if you guys haven't watched my Let's Play, uh, I'll put it in the annotations and probably the link below as well. And I'll also be seeing you guys later with another couple space program video. Yes, so we have Jim Lovell, John Glenn, and Frank Borman. So perhaps we can go to the moon. But uh, I think we're running out of time as well. So yeah, that's pretty good, right? Not bad for Universal Spacecraft. So let me just show you guys the landing gear. It's quite cool. Alright, so here it is. Universal Spacecraft. Free cam. There we go. This looks better. Okay, so look, we have the landing gear and we have our solar panels and we can we're good to go We're good to land and also you can wrote um, like I said in the beginning you can replace this with a um, Docking module so you can dock and rendezvous with a spacecraft. So I'm also putting um, two kind of spacecraft up for download in the description later on um, probably in the community is the KSP website um, I'm, I'm gonna put one that has the parachute and I'm going to put one that has the docking module and the parachute. And it's up to you guys to which one to download. So um, I guess right now I'm going to leave, leave this for uh, now. And I'm going to use it in my future times, my free times. Because I want to play with these guys a little bit. Yeah, so yeah. Remember, safety first, guys. You can't, remember, you can't forget safety. Right, so it's been PC Geekish signing off.